I have a second channel now. I'll just be posting like some little personal videos there. So I'll throw it up in an iCard right now and I'll also link it in the description and on the main channel page. Thanks, love you guys. Enjoy the video. All right guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna be exploring more glitches in the matrix as people like to call them. Basically just crazy unexplainable shit. So as usual, grab a snack, get comfortable, and shut the blinds. Here we go. On November 6th, 2022, user Bunny Hope made the following post to the Glitch in the Matrix subreddit. This was late at night, maybe around 2 a.m. Everyone living in my house was asleep and I was just scrolling through Twitter and TikTok. I had my AirPods in my ear and the case right next to me in bed. I had gotten up to grab another cover from my closet when I heard something drop. I assumed it was my fire stick, but when I turned to my bed, it was still there. So I thought, no biggie, it must have been my AirPod case, but when I went to look for it, I couldn't find it. I looked under my bed and under my dresser, but still couldn't find the damn AirPod case. Since it was so late at night, I just decided to leave my AirPods on my nightstand and look for the actual case the next morning. But the next morning, I began to clean my room, and I mean deep clean. I moved my bed, my dresser, my nightstand, everything and anything. I even looked in my shoes and deep in my closet, but I never found my case. I know it was late at night and I was tired, but I remember having it next to me and I remember hearing something fall to the ground. I even asked my mom to help me look, but neither of us ever found anything. It was so strange and frustrating because one, they were expensive, and two, my room isn't even that big, so it's not like it's in a part of my room that I never go to. To this day, I never found the AirPod case and I had to end up buying a new one. Thankfully, they weren't as expensive. Now, if you've been around for a little bit, you'll know that I just made a video similar to this where we covered a guy who dropped his phone and just never found it. And it's been like four years and just, it's never popped up. I don't know why, but those stories in particular are some of the most fascinating to me because they just completely defy logic. Wow, this next one is a really good one. It's a little bit more popular, but for good reason. It was a bit long originally, so just know that I cut some of the fluff out. I'd like to preface this by saying my husband is an electrical engineer and I'm a teacher. We're not crazy people. So back when my husband and I were dating, my husband was in a terrible car crash. His truck hit black ice and he slid into oncoming traffic. His truck was completely totaled. So was the other truck he hit. The weird thing is though, both he and the other guy were completely fine. Not a scratch on them. All my husband had was a bruise on his knee. The first responders were baffled, as was the towing company and insurance when they realized no one had died or were even severely injured. Fast forward to a few days after the crash. My husband comes over to my apartment. We're having a conversation about a university class we're both in, and he casually asks when I got the flat screen TV sitting on my dresser. At this point, I'm very confused because I've had that little flat screen since I was 13, and I've had it the entire year that we'd been dating. I asked him what he was talking about and said that I've always had the TV. He told me to quit pulling his leg and asked me what I did with the old tube TV. I had no idea what he was talking about and told him so. He's convinced I had a tube TV. I proceeded to get on Facebook and showed him a picture we had taken two weeks prior with the TV in the background. It's a flat screen in the picture. My husband goes white like he's seen a ghost and just stares into space for a minute. And eventually his eyes started to water. I asked him what was wrong and he said, I swear to God, I'm not crazy. You've had a tube TV since we started dating. It was a tube TV when we took that picture. I brushed it off as his head being rattled from the accident and he didn't bring it up again. However, anytime we hung out in my room, he'd always look at the TV weird. Fast forward about seven years and the couple are now married. Somehow my husband and I get on the topic of fires and he goes on about the danger of kitchen fires and I say, no need to worry, we're all set with the extinguisher in the closet. He looks at me like I have three heads and asks me what I'm talking about. I remind him about the extinguisher in the front closet where we keep the coats. We've had it for three years. He insisted we buy one when we bought our house. My husband shakes his head and tells me he has no idea what I'm talking about and we don't have a fire extinguisher. I remind him about not only my memories of fighting about if we really needed one, where to put it, buying it from Home Depot, but also installing it to the wall in the closet. He looks at me with confusion and tells me none of that happened. I get up, go to the closet to show it to him, all the while cursing at him for being an asshole for forgetting our two-week fight about it, and lo and behold, no extinguisher. Not only is there no extinguisher, there's no holes in the wall where I know we installed it. No fresh paint. This wall has never been touched. I insist he's moved it and fixed the wall and asked why the fuck he would play such a stupid prank. He continues to insist we've never had one, let alone talked about getting one. This goes on for several minutes. 
I'm approaching hysterics, telling him to quit playing with me when he finally says, Now you know how I feel about that TV! We didn't speak about it for a long time. Then, after I found this thread, he brought up his theory that perhaps in another timeline or dimension or whatever you want to call it, we both actually died and we reset like a video game, and the TV and extinguisher are glitches. I don't know if I agree with him, all I know is that I've never been so rattled in my whole life, and every time I get something out of the closet, I'm overwhelmed with this feeling of wrongness. I know it should be there, but somehow, it's just not. I can't explain it. He says he will go to his grave, swearing I had a tube TV. Now this is definitely something that I personally feel like would drive a lot of people to insanity, regardless of whether or not any of that actually happened, even if it was just a mental thing. I mean, being so certain that something was there, and then having it not be there, or be completely different from how you remember it, has just got to be terrifying. But this is a perfect example of why I like these stories, and again, I'm not usually a believer in the paranormal, but they just don't make any sense. This subreddit is really not known for people writing fictional stories like No Sleep is. This is just people trying to make sense of crazy things that have happened to them. But whether it's just something going on in our minds, or something greater going on with the world, just having these crazy things happen must be extremely disturbing. I mean, that guy's memory of that tube TV was literally strong enough for him to be brought to tears. It's crazy. Alright, this next one is really weird, especially knowing that everybody in the family saw this happen. The woman who originally posted this deleted their account, but it was posted on March 25th, 2019. Here's what they write. My husband came home twice. So my husband gets out of work at 5.30pm and gets home between 5.36 and 6 o'clock. Sometimes my kids are still eating dinner. Last week I'm getting a head start on dishes and my kids are still eating dinner. I hear the dogs go off, hear his truck door. A few seconds later he does his distinct throat clear and tells the dogs to quiet down. Comes in through the front door, says hi to the kids. They say hi back. I turn and smile and he goes upstairs to go to the bathroom. I look at the clock and it's 5.40pm. He never comes back though. I go outside to smoke a cigarette and notice his stuff isn't at the table where he throws it after work. Whatever. So I go upstairs after my cigarette and go to look at the bathroom door. The light is off and the door's open, but it's empty. I go check the bedroom. Nothing. I ask the kids and they say he was probably in the bathroom. I said that I checked and he wasn't there. The kids can see every door leading to the outside from the dinner table. So I go back upstairs and check the rooms. He's not there. I look out a window to the driveways and his truck isn't out front. So I asked the kids if they saw him leave, but they didn't. I said he's not here anymore and all the kids look confused and start exchanging weird looks. At 5.50, the dogs start barking and I hear his door. I hear his keys at the table outside and he walks in and says hi, then he goes to the bathroom. My kids and I look at each other weird but don't say anything. When he gets out of the bathroom, I ask him where he went. He had a confused face and asked what I meant. I tell him what I've explained so far and he looks at the kids and says he was just getting home. The kids say they saw him and talked to him and so did I. He made the hmm face, and all the kids just looked disturbed. I told them all it was just a time glitch. It was the weirdest thing I've ever experienced because there were witnesses, my kids, and we had all interacted with him. So yeah, how can you even begin to explain this one? I mean, the dogs heard him, they heard the, the truck door close, they saw him come inside, they all said hi to him, he said hi back, they heard him go upstairs, and then he was just gone. Yeah, I'm not even going to try to explain this. Okay, this is kind of a cool one. Um, I've heard a lot of little stories about like younger kids, like almost read people's minds. Um, again, this is all crazy stuff. I don't know if I really believe in all of this, but I would be lying if I said I haven't heard these stories multiple times. So let's just get into this one. I don't know if this belongs here. It's such a weird but insignificant event that I need to share. I was at a family event today, Queen's Platinum Jubilee, and unfortunately my family eat that kind of thing up. There were a few relatives I knew, but hadn't spent a lot of time with. While sat away from the main celebrations with my partner and one of the kids, she was nine and took a shine to us. I thought I could smell smoke, didn't vocalize it, didn't even look up for my phone, just thought it. The girl looked at me and said, You're right, they're having a fire next door, you can see the smoke. She then proceeded to point above the trees where there was smoke. My partner asked what she was on about, and she didn't reply. I later asked my partner if I spoke aloud about the fires, but she said no. I also thought shouted her name for like 10 minutes after and got no response, so less psychic and more glitch. Was also sober and don't believe in the paranormal. I think it's kind of funny to imagine this like fully grown man just shouting this kid's name in his own head to see if she can hear him. But on a more serious note, I again have no explanation for this. Alright, I really want to hear your opinions on this next one, so feel free to leave a comment.
My boyfriend and I live two miles outside of town in the country. Yesterday, I had to run into the grocery store, so I grabbed my boyfriend's keys, as my car is not drivable right now, and headed toward town. About a quarter of a mile up, the most unreal, freaky thing happened to me. I saw a vehicle approaching from the opposite direction that was unmistakably my boyfriend's car, the same one I was driving. I looked at the driver as he passed, and it was my boyfriend driving it, looking at me just as confused as I was looking at him. I called him immediately and asked what the hell that was, and, of course, he had no idea what I was referring to, and I didn't think he would since he was at home when I left. I got to the grocery store and sat in the car shaking and dumbstruck, trying to figure out what just happened. It took me a good 15 minutes to feel sturdy enough to go into the store. I don't know exactly what happened, obviously, but I have my thoughts. So as the story was starting, I almost clicked off because I thought that she was just going to say that she saw the same car, and I was like, everybody kind of does that, you know what I mean? When you know of a car, you always see it on the road. But then when she said she saw her boyfriend in the same exact car, that just blew my mind. And the thing is, this isn't like some old relative or some old friend, this is her boyfriend. She sees this guy every single day probably, so she knows the face. It's not like it's easily mistaken with somebody else. And the fact that he was looking at her, giving her the same exact face, makes me think like maybe in some other reality or whatever, he went to her and said the same thing. Maybe he even posted onto the same exact subreddit with the same story. Now again, I don't know how much I believe these. I, I just, I don't know what to think because again, I'm usually a very skeptical person, but the unexplainability, that is definitely not a word. <laughs> you get my point though. The fact that these are just so impossible to explain makes them so fascinating, and it's it's just very difficult to wrap your brain around. This next one is one of those crazy ones. It was posted by user AggressiveAD9800. It's been about a week, and I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact that I might have died in another timeline and just jumped to this one. Background. I was driving down PCH, a very long highway up the coast of California, at 8.15pm exactly. I know this because I called my mom to let her know I was stopping to watch the sunset. So as I'm watching the sunset, I hear a car horn blaring, and I mean it was loud. It sounded like it was coming right at me. I turn around and see a car coming straight for my car, but suddenly, I'm sitting on the ground. Very confused, a headache is starting to come on, but I wasn't hit. My car wasn't hit, and I'm still breathing. Obviously freaked out, I get back up and I check my phone to call my mom because this is just crazy, and I notice that it was 8.13pm. I check my phone to see if I actually did call her, but there's no history of it. I shake the nerves off and decide to just get home quickly, thinking maybe that was foreshadowing an event I did not want to actually live through. Once I'm home, my mom asked me why I called her and just hung up. I asked what time I called, and she said 8.15pm. There is still no history of me calling her on my phone. Am I crazy, or did I just switch timelines? This next one was posted by user CarpeDMCC. I want to start by saying that I've never done drugs, have no history of mental illness, and I wasn't drinking at around 7.30am when this happened, nor had I the night before. I take the bus in the morning, and I wait at a pretty large outdoor terminal. Lots of people walk their dogs and walk around it in the morning by where I normally stand. Two days ago, I saw a tall guy walking a dog that was a golden retriever type. That's not unusual. He was wearing a gray sweater and khakis, and was tan in complexion. I looked away for a second, and it was like he and the dog had both paused. Weird, I thought, until the same exact man, just with a yellow lab instead, came walking down the hill. The two of their profiles lined up in front of my eyes, about seven feet in front of me, and they became the same person, with the lab being the dog that won out. I wouldn't have believed this actually happened and would have chalked it up to me being tired or something if the girl sitting there with me hadn't exchanged shocked glances with me. I also saw him with the lab today. It's really trippy. Yeah, this one definitely sounds more like a glitch than anything else. It almost sounds like she was looking right at the dog and the man when like two universes collided or something. I don't know, again, like all the others, I can't think of any explanation for this, especially since it sounds like the girl sitting next to her saw the same exact thing. Wow, I can't imagine what I'd be thinking if this next one happened to me, so let's just read it and then we'll talk about it. I apologize if this doesn't make sense, but I'm freaked out and I have no idea how to explain this. My coworker and I were driving back from dinner to the place we were staying at. We had driven this route a handful of times and we were very familiar with the surrounding area. It was a seven minute drive from the restaurant to where we were staying. So we left the restaurant and had a straight drive for about two miles. No turns until we had to take a right turn into the parking lot of the property we were staying at. 
As we approached the hotel, the tall Courtyard by Marriott sign was visible, as was the building. We were a block away from the turn, and then we just suddenly weren't. We were all of a sudden driving on a highway, about to take the exit on the right. It was immediately apparent, and I said to my coworker, wait, something is wrong here. And he replied, yeah, what the hell just happened? We were just about to turn into the parking area. I told him to pull over, and I looked up on maps where we were. The map showed that we were 20 minutes away, in the opposite direction from which we had come. The time on the clock was still the same as it was when we were next to the hotel. I don't understand, and neither does he, and he doesn't want to tell anyone because it sounds so crazy. We teleported 20 minutes away. It was the single most disorienting feeling I have ever experienced. But now after that, I feel like everyone in my life has just changed. Everyone feels so distant. I can't shake the feeling that something is still very off. What's strange to me about this one is how sudden it was. Like a lot of the times when reading these stories, like they get like a weird feeling in their stomach or something about their surrounding environment changes before the crazy thing happens. But with this, it just happened. They were about to turn into the parking lot and then they were suddenly just 20 minutes away. And the crazy thing is that literally no time passed. It's not like they blanked for 20 minutes. They just suddenly were somewhere else. Here's a pretty freaky one, especially since the same exact thing happened to two people in the same house. Okay, this is gonna sound weird, but I have no idea where else to post this. Three nights ago, it was in my 19-year-old daughter's room, and she went downstairs to get a snack. When she was downstairs, I heard her say, where are you hiding? So I asked who she was talking to. She said her 17-year-old brother. Her brother was dead asleep in his room, so I said, no, he's asleep. After a pause, she ran upstairs and freaked out. She had me look in his room and verify he was there. After which she told me she saw her brother in the hallway and she followed him down the stairs. When she got to the bathroom, he was gone. This was very weird, but it was late at night and honestly, I thought that she believed it happened, but that it didn't actually happen. Well, then comes tonight. I'm in the downstairs bathroom and I hear my son come down the stairs, walk down the hall, stand outside the door, and I see a shadow, and he says, hey ma. So I say, what's up bro? No response. So I say, yeah Vin? I hear him walk up the stairs, so I yell for him again. Nothing. So I call him to find out what he wanted, and he's utterly confused, in his virtual reality headset with other people that confirm he's been on a call. I'm not sure what's happening, but I'm a tad freaked out and I have no idea what the f is going on. Thoughts? So yeah, that one's very weird. What I'm almost thinking is, and again, I don't know if I really believe in the paranormal, but what if it's like a ghost that just looks very similar to the brother? What's crazy is that the mother heard his footsteps, heard him come down the hall, saw his shadow, and even heard him call out for her. I could maybe understand somebody just like accidentally hearing their name being called when it actually wasn't, but to have all of those things happen would just be too big of a coincidence. Can anybody think of a logical explanation for this one? Let me know in the comments. Moving on, um, this one is screwing with me. It was posted by user Nevrom14. I work at a financial institution and as part of my role, I coordinate training for all new hires within the first few weeks of their onboarding. The process begins when local managers send me the names and contact details of the new hires so I can reach out to them for a brief introduction and set the expectations of the training material. Prior to the start of the pandemic, I would simply reach out to the new hire at their new office phone number. However, with the new work from home changes, I would now reach out to mobile numbers and residential phone numbers. All in all, a very similar process to what I was doing before, just with the caveat of having to reach out to people at home. As per usual, I received a new spreadsheet with the names and info of the new hires I needed to contact when I came across quite a unique name. I picked up my headset and dialed the phone number provided. New hire. Hello, this is... name. Hi, good morning, this is me calling from financial institution. Did I catch you at a good time? Yes, this is great. However, could you please call me at my landline? My mobile service is not very reliable in this area. I wrote down the phone number she provided and we hung up. Immediately, I dialed the phone number and waited for the dial tone. An older woman picked up. Hello? Hi, good morning. My name is me, and I'm looking for the new hire. Can I speak to her? Sorry, who are you? I'm me, calling from financial institution. She asked me to call her back on this line. Is she available? Silence. Hello? Older woman. What do you mean she asked you to call her back? When? 
Um, I was just talking to her, and she said the reception in the area wasn't very reliable, and to call her back at this number. I'm sorry, but that's impossible. She died three days ago. I double-checked that I had the right phone number with the woman. Yes, that's correct. I'm sorry, I may have written down the number incorrectly. I apologize for the inconvenience, and I'm very sorry about your loss. I hung up and was lost for words. I somehow managed to write down the wrong phone number and reached a residence with a recently deceased person who had the same unique name. I am certain I wrote down the correct number, but it is possible that the poor connection made me write a different number. I don't know what to think. This is an odd coincidence. Now all things considered, this would have to be one massive coincidence if it was just a number mix-up, given the unique name. This almost sounds like another one of those reality-shifting or time-shifting stories. I desperately want to apply logic here, but... Logic offers no explanation for these experiences. This next one is one of my favorites so far. It almost sounds like these two kids know something that the rest of us don't. This post was written by user Scarlet Rain on July 13th, 2022 with the title Did our two-year-old daughter glitch, or am I just living her origin story? This happened about eight weeks ago. It was past bedtime and I could hear her awake in her bedroom, which she shares with her four-year-old brother. This is not unusual and they're really cute when they play and chat at night. So, no big deal, right? I walk up the stairs and I can hear their little chatting and giggles. So I decided to pop in and see if they need anything, and to remind them it's sleep time. I stepped over the gate, so I was inside the room, but only about one step inside. The hall light was on, and it lit up their bedroom. My son is in the left bed, and my daughter is in the right. I say something like, what are you two up to? And they sheepishly tell me they're playing. My eyes adjust, and I can see my son in his bed, and my daughter in hers. I can see them moving and getting comfortable as we chat. The light is low, but enough to see the shapes of them, the reflection in their eyes, and the reflection on their bedroom floor, which is a narrow gap between their beds. We chat for about three minutes, and I ask them if they need anything. I clearly hear my daughter's voice answering me from her bed. As we're talking, I feel something brush the back of my leg. I don't even look to check because we have cats, and those little devils follow me everywhere. One must have jumped over the safety gate and was coming to see if anything interesting was going on. Something felt a bit weird though, and after maybe five seconds, I realized I hadn't heard the gate rattle as it always does when the cats jump over it. Ah, the cheeky little fur demon must have snuck in when I put them to bed, and that's probably why the kids are awake and giggling. I turn and look at the small gap behind me, expecting to see a little black cat. I sh** do not, my two-year-old daughter is stood there. I am so shocked, and I say to her, How did you get there? And that girl just starts giggling her little butt off, like hysterical giggling. I start nervously laughing. I say, you were just in bed. Did you just teleport, little miss? And we all start laughing. I'm persistent though, and I ask a few more times, how did you get behind me? But she doesn't answer me, she just keeps giggling sweetly. I ask her brother, how did she do that? And he just carries on laughing. I even say, what's going on here? What are we all laughing about? But neither can answer, and I am baffled. After a minute or two, I say something like, all right, super baby, let's get back in bed. I tuck them back in and close the door behind me. I am totally freaked out, not scared or anything, just utter confusion. It felt like I had just looked up and the sky was green. Now, I had been looking at her in her bed. I was talking to her. I could hear her voice coming from her bed. And I did not see her get out of the bed. I didn't see her walk towards me in the thin strip of floor space. I didn't hear her footsteps on the floor. She didn't make a peep of noise. It was like she just appeared behind me. Now, after reading this one, of course, I sat there and tried to think of an explanation. And it just, this one really sort of screws with me because... As she says, there's just a thin strip of floor space in between the two beds, so she definitely would have seen this kid get up. Even more than that though, she was literally talking with her while she was in bed. I mean, she even remembers seeing the reflection of the light in her eyes. So I don't know, her daughter was definitely in the bed and then suddenly just appeared behind her. I don't know, I can't think of any explanations. Let me know if you got any. <laughs> oh, this is a short one, but man, I think I'd go crazy if this happened to me. This was written by user Apocalypse Tea Party on the 4th of June, 2002. I was taking a shower and just staring aimlessly at the shower head, dreaming and pondering of the things that one ponders of during a shower. The shower head had a mirrored surface, and I slowly realized that, although I was staring directly at it, my reflection's eyes were looking off to the left. For a moment or two, I wondered how that was possible and what trick was causing my reflection to be looking that way, when, suddenly, my reflection's eyes shifted and looked directly at me. They continued to return my gaze for the rest of the shower as if nothing awry had been happening. It never happened before or since. Alright, this one just like really freaks me out. Um, 
I can't really explain what I want to say, so I'm gonna have to take you to the bathroom. That sounded weird. All right, so sorry about the terrible audio in here, but my point is, when I was younger, I used to think that like maybe the reason why you can't go through a mirror is because mirror you is like pushing back on it as equally as you are pushing against it. So it's like both forces cancel out and you just can't go through. You know what I mean? I don't know. It's kind of stupid. That probably didn't make any sense. Anyways, this next one is one of the hardest stories to explain in this entire video. It was posted on the 27th of June, 2022. Not sure if this qualifies as a glitch, but I just found this sub, and a post about a sock reminded me of this one, so I'll share. Maybe three years ago, I took my daughters to music lessons. I filled up with gas on the way using my debit card. After class, I decide to stop at Burger King, but I can't find my debit card. We do a very thorough search through the car, and of course, wallet and pockets. Nothing. I assume that I must have dropped it at the gas station, so I order a new card and move on with life. Last year, my house flooded during a hurricane. As a result, the walls had to be torn down. Inside the wall, we find the debit card. The expiration date is passed, so it's definitely not the current one, and the one that I lost that day is the only one I recall losing in the time that I lived in this house. So I don't know for a fact that it's definitely the same card, but I'm struggling to see how it's not. And even if it's not, still, how did it get into the wall? Not the weirdest story here, but I think about it a lot. Not the weirdest story here? Yeah, okay. Now I want to remind you, he lost the card while he was out of the house. He paid for gas using that card, then went to Burger King, and the card was lost. So, how did it end up back in his house, let alone in his freaking wall? This next one was posted on August 10th, 2022 by user Try and Try Again 2013 with the title, The Girl Who Wasn't. When I was 16, I took an SAT prep class to improve my score and get into a good college. The class was pretty boring, but I met the most interesting girl in the class. She was thin, fairly short, with light brown hair and green eyes. She always wore a green headband, which I thought was cute. Her name was Connie. We hit it off immediately and spent most of the class whispering to each other side by side at our desks. I spent about three weeks sitting next to her talking during the class. When the class was over, we exchanged IM handles so we could keep in touch. This was in the early 2000s. About a year passed by, and we continued talking online. We got to know each other pretty well, but we lived on completely different sides of the city, and it was quite a drive to visit each other, so being the young teens we were, we never actually got together. Eventually, I worked up the courage to ask her out for dinner. I set our date at a restaurant located between the both of us so we wouldn't have to drive too far. The time for our date rolled around, and I headed to the restaurant to meet her. I walked in and saw her sitting in a booth with two older individuals at the far side of the establishment. She looked exactly like she did in the class, Thin, light brown hair, green eyes, and she was wearing her signature green headband. I approached her and said hello. I gave her a hug and sat down next to her in the booth. I assumed these two older individuals across from us were her parents. Odd, I thought, but maybe they were there to chaperone. I could tell immediately something was wrong. The two older individuals looked very confused, surprised, almost bewildered. The look on Connie's face was also one of perplexity. Eventually she said, Who are you? I was shocked. I said, uh, I'm Jason. Remember we set up a date for tonight? I assume these are your parents. It's very nice to meet you. And I reached out my hand to shake her parents' hands. They didn't return my handshake. Instead, they simply looked at their daughter and said, Oh, did you forget to tell us this, Sarah? Sarah, I said. You told me your name was Connie. She looked absolutely puzzled and said, Sorry, you must have me confused with someone else. Oh, uh, hmm, my mistake, I replied, then scratched my head and headed out of the restaurant to my car. I was embarrassed. Maybe she just didn't want to go out with me, I thought. She could have at least just said no instead of leading me on this charade. Defeated and humiliated, I decided to just head home. When I opened the door to my car, I heard a voice behind me say, Hey Jason! I turned around. It was a tall, light blonde haired woman with a large round face and blue eyes. Uh, do I know you? I asked. It's me, Connie. We had a date planned, remember? Where are you going? She said. We went inside and had dinner. She was definitely Connie. She remembered all our previous conversations over the past year, but she looked nothing like the girl I met in class. When I asked her why she stopped wearing her green headband, she had no recollection of ever wearing or even owning this type of headband. I can't explain it. The strangeness of this one is pretty self-explanatory, but yeah. Now, it would have been strange enough if Connie had shown up looking completely different and not having any memory of the headband, but the fact that somebody who looked exactly like he remembered Connie looking, being there already, 
at the same exact restaurant wearing the same exact headband makes absolutely no sense. This one is really weird for several reasons, but we'll talk more about it after we finish reading it. This was posted by user MasterAdvantage5833 on May 16th, 2022. To begin, I was not high when these events happened. I was in a car with a few of my friends driving around to find a spot to park and smoke. These events took place a couple months ago. So I'm a college student in a very small North Carolina town. It has a population of about 3,000 people, and the town is less than three square miles, with most of it being one long road leading to and from big cities. One day, the five of us pack into our friend's car and start to drive around. We're looking for somewhere that's kind of discreet since it's still daylight outside, but not just blatantly on someone's property. We pulled into a neighborhood that looks pretty typical. Simple one-story houses that all look the same. Until they didn't. We turned onto a road that split off into a cul-de-sac. The moment we turned onto this road, I got a sinking pit in my stomach, as if we were somewhere we were not supposed to be. Like we had broken something in the universe or accidentally shifted dimensions. I remember looking at my roommate next to me in the back seat and instinctively murmuring, we shouldn't be here. Each of the houses within this cul-de-sac were extremely unique and different. One was a pretty sunshine, yellow, narrow, two-story house. One was a wider and more full blue and purple house. One looked like a normal suburban one-story beige house, but instead of beige, it was a deep maroon color. And the last one, all the way on the right, was a dark gray house with black trim. Each of the houses were very close together and had very different yard decorations, from big extravagant Easter bunnies and Easter eggs, to random gnomes, to Christmas trees, to wagons all over the place. They were scattered about like landmines. The dark house had shovels scattered about but no holes in the ground that implied digging. The cul-de-sac had a long, narrow, grassy, median island that you'd drive around to enter and leave. All of us in the car had an overwhelming urge to leave immediately, so we made our way around the little island. As we got around it, we looked at the dark house again. A man stood on the side of the house, facing us, but standing completely still. He was a black man wearing yellow with blue overalls and a dark shadow in front of his face. I don't know if it was hair or some sort of covering, but his face was not visible. We sped off and out of the neighborhood, worried that maybe he'd think we were trespassing and shoot us, something you always have to be prepared for in rural North Carolina. This was the rational worry at the time, but in the moment, we all felt an energy so powerful it could have pinned us to the ground if it tried. It felt all-knowing and maybe even evil. We left without issues, but all of us felt the same pit in our stomachs like we saw something we weren't supposed to. The weirdness doesn't stop there, though. When recalling the events, our stories all match up until recalling the man in the yard. We all saw someone, but the five of us each have a very different description of the person. One of them saw a little girl in a dress, Somebody else saw a woman in white. Someone else saw a man with a long beard and a gut wearing what looked like a dark suit. Each recollection of the memory, the person stood frozen in the exact same spot on the side of the house. To this day, we have no idea what we encountered or what exactly happened. It freaked all of us out and we swore to never go back there. I think the strangest part of this definitely has to be the weird person standing outside the front. I mean, how could everybody see such different things? Somebody saw a man literally in a black suit Another person saw a little girl in a dress. Another saw a woman in white. And then this guy saw a black man wearing a yellow shirt and blue overalls. These are all completely different descriptions and yet all remember the person standing in the same exact spot. And let's not forget the front lawns. I mean, the Easter decorations and the Christmas decorations were out at the same time. Those are on like completely different ends of the year. I don't know, overall just a very strange story. Okay, another short one here, but I refuse to leave this one out because I just love the concept of this experience. This was written by user AdorableAlbatross74 on May 26th, 2021. I think I saw future me, and she saw me too. This happened yesterday, and it still makes me uncomfortable. I was at the train station on my way back from work when I saw a couple. What drew my attention was the fact that they were speaking my language, so I looked at them. The woman was built and looked exactly like me, and I don't have a very common appearance for the country I live in, but a decade older, and the man was an aged carbon copy of my current boyfriend. But what really set my creepy radar off was the following. She had the tattoo I had always wanted to get, exactly where I wanted to get it, and it's a very personal design, only my best friend knows about it, so not a common tattoo. He was speaking my native language with a very distinctive accent of his home country, which is similar but not the same as the way people from the country we live in speak my language. So I looked at them when they were facing the other way, feeling extremely creeped out. It was then that the woman turned around and saw me, freezing instantly as if she had seen a ghost. Then I finally managed to look away and run towards the exit. 
I really feel like I'm going insane here. It was as if she, I, remembered that exact moment and knew exactly when and where to look for me. I didn't tell anyone because I didn't want them to think I'm completely nuts. Again, the idea of this happening is just super fascinating to me. I actually just wrote a little story very similar to this where someone goes back in time and kind of like meets their younger self. Um, I do a lot of fictional storytelling on this channel as well, not just videos like these. So if you want to check it out, I'll link it in the card up there. I don't know which corner it's going to be in, but one of the two top corners. Now this one is a little bit more wholesome than the others. It has to do with astral projection. And honestly, this is one of those things that you can't really deny the possibility of because we just don't know how consciousness works or why it's there or what powers it, you know what I mean? Anyways, this was posted three years ago on May 5th, 2020 by user Venus Valkyrie JH. So this happened about seven or eight years ago. My husband and I were laying in the bed one night watching television. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw a child in the doorway of our bedroom. Thinking it was our only child at the time, I tapped my hubby and said, Hey, look, I think Connor's trying to scare us. He turns and looks, and this child walked into our room. I can't explain it because it was one of those moments that seemed... somehow different. We watched in silence, soon realizing that this child was not our son. He toddles in, head slightly tilted back, curls bouncing, and diapers squish squishing as he goes to the end of our bed. We see his head go down like he was crouching, and when we got up to look, he was gone. I looked at Chris, my husband, and said, Did we just see a ghost? Then, almost as an afterthought, I said, Well, we know that if we have another baby and he has curls, that he was here before he was born. We both laugh because we're not trying for another baby at the time. Fascinated, we go to check on our son, and he was still fast asleep. A few months later, I'm pregnant. Surprise. So fast forward, and our new baby, Liam, is two. He toddles into the room, head tilted slightly back and curls bouncing, and it hit me like a bucket of ice water. Holy crap, this is the baby that came to visit us. I mean, there is absolutely no doubt in my mind. Now, on top of that, whenever Liam is staying the night elsewhere, like with my parents, he comes to visit me in my sleep. For example, one time he came and just smiled at me while I was taking a nap. He was in a little red shirt and his hair was cut short. He left with it long. The next day, I go to pick the kiddos up from mom. Lo and behold, his hair is freshly cut and he's wearing a little red shirt. I asked my mom, did he wear this yesterday? And she replies, oh yeah, he did, but he insisted on wearing it today, so he is. I look at him and say, did you go see mama yesterday in mama's dreams? He just looked up at me, he was four all big blue-eyed and serious, and nodded his head. So that's my glitch in the Matrix story. One of many, but the most profound. Our son, I guess, travels astral, and even stopped to see us before he was born. I would know those curls anywhere. The fact that my husband witnessed it with me makes it even more weird, but utterly fascinating. I'd really like to hear your opinions on this one if you haven't left a comment yet, because I just can't believe that she saw this and the husband saw it as well. Also, a lot of people always come to me with stories similar to these, so if you have something like this, be sure to drop it in the comments. I love hearing those. Alright, I love the idea of this next one. It just sounds like such a beautiful and breathtaking experience. This post was made by Brandon the DJ on October 26th, 2020. Here's what he says. We were all completely sober. Quick preface. So back in the summer, we had a huge friend trip to Lake Powell. For anyone that has been there, you know it's absolutely beautiful. Anyways, we were boating, going deeper and deeper through the canyons. At one point, I thought in my mind something along the lines of, damn, this place is so beautiful, it almost looks fake, or like it was designed to look this way by something. When I started thinking that in my mind, a friend turned around to me and said, dude, it feels like we're in a movie and we're looking at movie props. It looks so fake. And I turned around and looked and said, dude, what the f did you just say? I was thinking the exact same thing. And we were both freaking out about it, but then it got a little freakier. We were sitting at the back of the boat looking at our ten or so friends standing up while the boat was slowly going through the canyons, and as I watched them looking at the scenery, I experienced an altered state of consciousness. The best way to describe it is that the facade of the human experience was dropped, and all of a sudden my friends looked like gods or angelic beings experiencing Earth and just enjoying the moment. My friend turned to me and said, Dude, look at our friends. They're so beautiful and alive, they look like angels. And I knew at that moment we were both experiencing the same thing. The best way to describe what we saw is that it looked like we placed ourselves in a video game and we were enjoying what we created. It's super hard to describe this experience. If you've seen Maze Runner, you know how they make you forget everything before you go into the maze, but yet you know you had an existence before. It felt like that. The nature of reality teased us and slightly withdrew, and we saw our friends in this earth for what it could truly be for a brief moment in time. At first, I just imagined that this was somebody having like a moment of clarity, so to speak. Just sort of like really taking in their surroundings and feeling grateful for everything. But it is very strange that they seem to 
both have seen the same thing. It's almost like they were able to see their friends' souls for a minute. I don't know what would have caused this to happen to both of them at the same time, but like he said, very fascinating. I don't know, it's just like, these stories really make you question everything. Like, I just, I just, how do I explain this? Like lately I've been thinking a lot about like the nature of the soul and consciousness and our minds, not just our brains, but our minds. And when you really think about it and you look at what we know about that stuff and what we know about the soul and what we know about just again, consciousness, we really know very little. So I don't know, it's like when you hear stories like this, um, you have to be careful to not just dismiss them because we don't really know what we're talking about, you know? we I mean, we have psychology, we have biology, we understand how the body works, the physical body, but it does feel like there's something more, you know? It feels like consciousness is somehow beyond that. I don't know. Let's get back into the stories, I guess. Okay, this next one is one of my favorites. If you haven't been freaked out yet, just put yourself in this girl's shoes. On October 23rd, 2021, user Abandoned Truck Stop shared her very strange experience. I posted this story on a different sub and a lot of people suggested posting it here, so here goes. I have always wanted to share this story as it still keeps me up at night sometimes thinking about an explanation for it. When I was in college, I worked at a sports bar restaurant in Colorado. Before I was able to become a waitress, I had to be a hostess for a month. One Saturday we got pretty busy because there was a local baseball game happening. I was seating people pretty frequently throughout the afternoon. Towards the end of the lunch rush, a couple came into the restaurant. I remember commenting on the woman's large turquoise necklace, telling her how pretty it was as I showed them to a table on the back patio, having some useless and polite conversation with them the whole time. I went and got them waters and brought them to the table, told them their server would be with them shortly and returned to the host stand. About five minutes later, the same couple walked into the restaurant and toward the host stand. I was very confused and asked if they needed to be reseated. The lady looked at me seemingly just as confused as I was and I noticed her large turquoise necklace again. The man said, two please, and I instinctively grabbed two menus and told them to follow me, thinking someone was playing a joke on me. I turned the corner to get a view out to the back patio where I sat the couple originally and saw that the table was empty. Per the couple's request to sit outside again, I led them to the patio and noticed two waters and two menus sitting on the table already. I didn't know what to do, so I picked everything up and told them I would get them some new waters. I made my way to the bar to get waters and the waitress from the back patio section came up and asked if I was okay. She said that five minutes earlier she saw me walk to the patio holding two menus as if I was seating people, but there was nobody there. Then I came back with waters and put them down as if I was talking to people, but the seats were still empty. She said she was on her way to come check on me because her and other guests on the back porch were concerned about what I was doing talking to nobody. I asked if there were other people there now and she looked confused and said, yes. So from what I can gather, I saw, talked to, and sat these two people briefly before they actually came into the restaurant. I have no explanation for this, and I'm wondering if anyone else has ever had an experience like this. Yeah, that one just freaks me the hell out for some reason, especially since she saw the necklace on this woman before she even came in, apparently. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. All right, this next one is kind of a fear of mine. The title is, my friend seems to have just disappeared from the face of the earth, and I don't mean went missing, just disappeared with nobody recalling her ever existing. I guess my actual fear is like seeing something supernatural or completely unbelievable and then trying to explain it to people, but you can just never convince anybody of what you saw. Nobody believes you. I just feel like that would drive me insane. Anyways, on with the post, which was made by Trash Panda on March 30th, 2020. So two years ago, I went on vacation to Spain. It was a package tour for teens. I befriended a guy and a girl there who were a few rooms away from me in the hotel. Since we were over 18, we were allowed to hang out alone outside of the hotel, and we practically spent the whole trip just walking around town and drinking together. I clearly remember adding the girl, let's name her X, on Facebook and talking to her on Messenger, since that's how the three of us were planning our days. I even started a group conversation with X and that boy, let's name him Y. Fast forward to today. It was her birthday, so I wanted to wish her happy birthday on Messenger, and she just wasn't in my contacts. I thought maybe she unfriended me because of my copious amounts of shit post, but looking her up on Facebook didn't bring up anything. I decided to ask why whether he'd heard from her recently, and he said he never met that girl. I looked through all the people me and X both added on Facebook during our trip, and even asked some of them about her. Nobody seems to recall meeting X. Why claims we were hanging out with another girl who I do know and spoke to on the trip? but never hung out with. I don't know what to make of it and I'm kind of freaking out. 
I'm thinking maybe my mental health is much worse than I thought, but honestly there's a huge difference between mild seasonal depression and hallucinating a person for two weeks straight. This is another one I'm going to ask for you guys to leave some comments about. I just want to hear some sort of an explanation for this because I'm completely at a loss. In a later update, he said that he actually did go to a psychiatrist and they completely cleared him of any mental illness. He even downloaded all of his Facebook records and still found nothing of the girl. She had completely vanished. This next one is another one of those stories where someone may have met themselves from the future. However, this time they had a very direct interaction. Again, for us, there's obviously going to be some skepticism, but for the person who actually went through this, I just can't even begin to imagine the confusion that would come from experiencing this. The post was made by user DeathBeforeTaxes21 on the 25th of November, 2020. This is a story that haunts me daily. This happened in 1992. I had just graduated high school and was working in a warehouse. I kinda enjoyed it and settled thinking I will probably retire here. Yep, I had zero ambition. I was a sad, lazy, cringe-inducing shitbag. A new guy started. It's a warehouse with high turnover, so nothing unusual about new guys. And everyone asked if we were related because we looked alike. He was probably late 30s, early 40s, and I was 18 at the time, and he was fatter. He seemed to carry himself like me in the way that he walked and spoke. His second day we worked together on a wrapping station, and the first thing he said to me was, you still have that penthouse magazine under your mattress. I did. Weird, but totally normal for teen boys, I suppose. He then said, I know everything about you. You are worried about never getting a girlfriend. I was floored, but I again thought it was a usual teenage thing. I mean, I wasn't the best looking guy, so I guess it wasn't a stretch to guess. Probably the start of bullying and the end of my job. I asked him why he was saying all this shit, and he looked at me, and his expression is seared into my mind, and left an image I see daily. He said, I am you. He then went on to tell me everything about myself. I mean my deepest, darkest secrets that no one knows. Then we went to lunch and were outside smoking and, yep, same brand, Camel Wide Regulars. Hard to find where I lived, so I had never seen anyone smoking them. I asked him to be serious and asked how he knew all this shit. He said, I already told you Tom Talk. Tom Talk is a nickname only one person called me, and he was my dad's friend I barely saw. A crappy Jetta pulled into the parking lot, and he said, That's our girl. She is a demon who is horrible to us. I asked him why he's with her, and he said, She's the best we could do. When she got out, she was disgusting looking. I mean, trailer trash would be too kind, and she waddled her ass over to us. She said, Let's go. Before he left, he stared right into my soul and said, We deserve better. Please, go to college and stop being lazy. Make something out of yourself. Trailer park girl just kind of laughed like, yeah, right. He left with her and I never saw him again. I think I ran into a younger version of her at a friend's house years later, and he introduced me and said we should hook up. I said no. I went to college and stopped being a pathetic, lazy cringe fest. I accomplished everything I set out to do as I always felt the need to not let him down. I know none of this makes sense. How can I explain something I barely understand myself? None of it makes sense whatsoever, like... Why would a future me get a job with me? He had to fill out a job application and have his references checked, right? Yes, I asked my manager about it, but he just told me to mind my own damn business and to focus on my job. Has anyone had something like this happen to them? It's haunted me daily since. I'm 48 and I have not seen any time travel machines. Help me out here, maybe end this once and for all. Please tell me your experience. So my initial knee-jerk reaction was that this was just somebody playing a trick on him, but... He says that these are his deepest, darkest secrets. I mean, these are things that he's probably never told anyone. So, how could this one random person know all this stuff? Even if it wasn't actually his future self, that part of it makes absolutely no sense. Sadly, we're probably never going to get any of the answers to these questions. This one is literally straight out of a Twilight Zone episode. This was posted on April 17th, 2020 by user Letalian. I really don't know where to start with this. I'm gonna try to give every single detail I remember. It happened this morning, so it's not like it was that long ago. I've been looking up things online basically all day trying to find some sort of solution to this, but I really truly feel that I'm losing my mind. I can't find anything, and believe me, I've looked. The closest thing I could find was a link to a post from like three years ago in this subreddit that really had nothing to do with my problem, but I'm gonna tell the story here in the hopes that someone can tell me what the hell happened. I don't really have a history of any prior mental health issues. I had ADHD as a kid, and I went through a small cycle of depression years back, but that's about it. This whole corona situation has me working from home, so that allows me to basically have a sleep schedule of my choosing. When I woke up this morning, it was probably closer to noon, the family wasn't home. 
This isn't strange, as most of the time the old lady and the kids are off doing their own thing by the time I wake up. But when I go to make a bagel, I saw that the back door was open. I thought maybe she had taken the kids out back to play, so I went out to look, but nobody was there. I kind of scoffed at her under my breath for leaving the door open, the bugs are pretty bad, and I closed it. But immediately after turning around after closing the door, I saw that across the living room the front door was open too. I could see through the wide open front door that both cars were in the driveway, so I went to go see if they were out front. Nope. This made me a bit nervous as both cars were in the driveway and both doors were left wide open. I started assuming the worst. Across the street, I saw our neighbor's front door open as well. We are very close with our neighbors. The dad is a childhood friend of mine and the kids have known each other ever since they were born pretty much. So I just walked over and went in the front door, thinking my family was probably over there. Nope. Not a damn trace. Obviously at this point I started getting panicked. I couldn't find my family, all my doors were open, and my neighbor's house was in the same exact state. All of their cars were parked as well. I went to walk back across the street to get my phone, and I noticed the house next to mine had their front door wide open too. And the one on the house on the other side. This is when I lost my shit. I felt like I was in a goddamn horror movie or something. I looked down the street and every single front door I could see was open and not a damn soul could be found. I went back inside into my room to get my phone that was charging from the night prior and as soon as I pull it off the charger and unlock it, I hear the front door open and my wife and kids muffled voices. I sprint to the kitchen to find my wife with bags of groceries in her hands. She just tells me to help her unload them. I ask her where the hell her and the kids have been and how they even went anywhere without taking one of the cars. She looks at me like I'm stupid and tells me that she took her car and that she's been gone for like an hour. I explain to her the entire story and she still just looks at me like I'm stupid. She asks me if I'm sure it wasn't just a dream and I am positive I was not dreaming. Absolutely positive. She tells me she believes me and that we can look into it but I could tell she really didn't. Who can blame her? Typing all this and going back to read it, I sound like a fucking lunatic, but I don't know where else to tell the story or anyone else who will really listen to me. I think I'm going crazy. Edit. I spoke to my buddy across the street as well, and he said he and the family had been home all day, but there was clearly nobody there when I went to look for mine. Now, it would have been weird enough if it was just his family that had gone missing, but it looks like it was everybody on the street. And all their front doors were open too. I mean, that is just, like, so scary to imagine. It almost sounds like there was some sort of an event or, like, some presence that just called everybody out of the homes and into the street and then proceeded to just take them away. Now, here's a somewhat unsettling question. Did everyone else disappear? Or was he the one that disappeared for just a brief moment? I guess that question doesn't have any logical answer, but then again, none of this does. Here's another one that makes absolutely no sense. This sounds like a time skip story to me. This was posted by user Me and the Boys on January 29th, 2021. When I was a teenager, I worked as a lifeguard in a water park. We had five water slides that started from this one tower and ended at a single pool that was in a line of sight. But with the layout of the park, it was a few minute walk from the slide pool to the top of the slides again. One lifeguard sat at the top of the tower and another would be at the pool at the bottom. So we would signal to each other if someone was messing around on the way down or if we needed to pause the line for any reason. With the layout of the park, you could not just see the slide pool, but see the entire park from the top of the slide tower. You could even see someone as they walked the entire few minute path from the slide pool up to the slide tower again. The last two hours of the day were always really slow on the slides, so I would frequently skip my breaks to sit on top and twiddle my thumbs for the remainder of my shift. Anyways, it's about 30 minutes before closing and I'm doing my thing chilling on the top of the slides. Only two kids, a boy and a girl, were going down the slides and coming back up since there was no line at this point. As I said, it was a long walk, so the boy would come up and go, then about two minutes later the girl would come up and go, two minutes later the boy again, etc. Well, the boy comes back up, and he goes down slide two. Slide two is completely enclosed, very fast, under a 20 second ride, and he has about a 24 inch diameter. I'm bored, so I lean over the rails, watching the bottom, and never see the boy come out of the slide. A minute later, the girl comes up and says she wants to go down slide two. I tell her to wait a minute while I watch for the boy to come out. He never does. After a solid two minutes from me sending him down, keep in mind it's a fully enclosed 20 second ride, I radio the guard at the bottom and ask if the boy came out. The guard says he never did. Then I scan over the entire park, there's maybe 20 people in the park at this time of the day, and I don't see the boy anywhere. At this point I'm getting confused, but I chalk it up to the boy coming down, jumping out of the side of the pool, and going to the nearby bathroom. 
After concluding I must be crazy, I send the girl down slide 2. Sure enough, 20 seconds later the girl comes out of the slide and runs off, no issue. A few minutes later, the girl comes back up, goes down slide 2 again, and comes right back out 20 seconds later. So I go back to waiting for the next person to come up the slide tower when, all of a sudden, the boy comes out of the bottom of the second slide. It had been at least 10 minutes since I had sent him down, and the girl had gone through that slide as normal two times in those 10 minutes. To this day, I can't figure out what happened. Like I said, slide 2 is fast, narrow, and fully enclosed. There's no way to stop yourself on the way down. Trust me, I've tried. And even if he did manage to stop himself, there is no way that that girl could have passed by him at all, let alone unimpeded in the normal 20 seconds. This boy just disappeared off the face of the earth for 10 minutes and respawned in the middle of slide 2 like nothing happened. I've gone over it in my head many times, and to this day, I still have no clear what happened to that boy for 10 minutes. Now for a little bit, I just wanted to dismiss this one and say that the kid just somehow like got up into the slide and just hung out in there, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense when you reread everything, because he said that the slide probably has like a 24 inch diameter, which I mean, it's gotta be a small ass slide. And so for this girl to go through twice and not slow down at all or bump into him or push him out is very unlikely. And again, he said that he's tried to stop himself in the slide himself and just wasn't able to do it because of how fast it is. I had never really considered the idea of time skipping before reading this subreddit and to be honest, it's just such an interesting idea, like, assuming that it is real, and assuming that it's an actual thing that happens randomly and rarely in nature, everybody would probably still just assume that it was fake and just call everybody who went through it crazy or that say that they were lying. You know what I mean? Like, whether or not people are actually lying and making it up or whether or not they're actually going through it, they're just going to be dismissed because of how rare it is. So, I don't know, hearing these stories really makes you kind of rethink everything. I don't know. On that note, here's another really cool time skip story. This one actually sounds like these two grandparents actually went back in time to like way before they were even born. Sit tight for this one, this is one of my favorites. So I've heard this story a million times and I absolutely love it. My favorite glitch story. Been meaning to write it for a while, so here we go. So when my grandparents were very young, right after they got married, they went to Devon for their honeymoon. This was about 60-ish years ago. Now, they'd been to Devon many times in a similar spot, and they're reasonably familiar with the area. One afternoon, they decided to go for a stroll down a forest track. After about half an hour or so, they stumbled upon a gorgeous old worldly tea room, and they decided to go in for a little snack. My grandmother had a tea cake, my granddad a scone, and a pot of tea between them both. They particularly enjoyed the tea and asked what brand it was so they could purchase it for themselves. What struck them the most about this quaint little tea room was how old-fashioned it was. Even the waitresses were wearing uniforms which seemed very out of date. They seemed very smart though, and everyone was very busy working hard. They spoke again to their waitress, paid and complimented how wonderful it was. After about a week, they decided to return because they had enjoyed it so much, and they were eager to get another cup of that tea. So off they went, down the path, and they took every single step exactly as they remembered to get to the tea room. When they finally reached where it should have been, they came to a dead end. No tea room. Just a wall of row upon row of adult trees. They just couldn't understand it. It was absolutely impossible. They had followed the route perfectly, and yet there was absolutely no sign whatsoever of this tea room. Confused and dumbfounded, they wandered around the woods a bit more, putting it down to their own silliness and just getting lost. After a while, they crossed paths with an elderly woman who was walking her dog, and they stopped and asked her where they could find the little old-fashioned tea room. The woman looked confused and told them there was no such tea room in the forest and that she had lived there her entire life, so she would know. My grandparents started to feel delusional, and they told the woman that they had actually been there a week ago and had gone in for a bite to eat and drink, so that was impossible. The woman seemed very confused and said they must be mistaken. The only tea room which is in the woods had been closed down many, many years ago, even before my grandparents were born, but she had been to it as a little girl. After pressing the woman a little harder and describing the tea room with as much detail as they could remember, even down to the tea brand, she seemed dumbfounded and agreed it sounded exactly like the tea room she remembered from her childhood. They parted ways and joked that it must have been a slip in time. My grandparents still tell the story with so much detail that it fascinates me, and while my grandmother might tell a tale or two, my grandfather is the most humble and honest man, and he cannot explain what happened, but even when he tells the story now, he gets goosebumps. I think it's an amazing story and by far my favorite glitch tale. The funniest thing is, the tea brand still existed after all those years, and they drank it for years before it got too expensive for them to send from Devon. Alright, here's a very short one. While I read this, I want you to imagine it happening to yourself for the full effect. 
This was posted by user Tortellini on February 2nd, 2021. I'm not sure if this is the right sub to share this story, but one day some years ago after school, I came home as per usual, took my shoes off at the front, then walked towards my room to drop off my backpack. I opened my door and see me standing on the other side of the bed just staring, wearing the same uniform as me. I've never seen myself so vividly and from that perspective. I was just having like a three second stare off with myself. In the moment though, I freaked out, dropped my bag, ran out of my room. The interaction was very brief, but honestly traumatic. Then I was gone but it was the craziest out-of-body experience ever. Personally, felt more like I was seeing another dimension. Any thoughts? Okay, I just wanna point out that if you are seeing this right now and you haven't skipped around a lot, you've been sitting here for over an hour. So clearly you enjoyed the video and I really hope that you subscribe and see some of my future stuff. I also post a lot of fictional stories as well and a lot of them are along these lines. So I really think you'll enjoy the rest of the stuff on the channel. I also do have a second channel now where I'll just be posting a lot of personal videos, so if you just want to keep up with me and see more of me, I'll have a link to that in the description. And that's it.